please keep your questions short, precise, and you will have a chance to ask your question, and I'm sure the Prime Minister will be happy to answer them. Um, I believe I have contributed my uh, fair share to uh, fighting systems in Ethiopia that uh, um, were unmistakably, unmistakably uh, oppressive. Uh, I uh, fought for 17 years to remove the Mengistu dictatorship. Um, and uh, after that, we made sure that those previous dictators who are not accused of uh, crimes were given the opportunity that they denied every other Ethiopian, which is that they were given the free choice to express themselves, including through the media. Now, when they do express themselves through the media, those remnants of the Mengistu regime, you would expect them to be um, uh, less than grateful to those who removed them from power. Uh, and so, uh, over the years, uh, in bringing choice to Ethiopians, we have had to trample on a few toes. Uh, and those toes have, have, uh, have had uh, difficulty accepting the status quo in Ethiopia. That type of criminality and oppression is dead. It's finished. And it is not coming back. The main challenge in Ethiopia is poverty. Um, I'm sure many of you will have heard of, those of you who have heard of Ethiopia, will have heard of it in the context of poverty, famine, and war. Uh, and this have uh, been killing people by the millions. So my hunch is that uh, overcoming poverty uh, and uh, ensuring food security could contribute to the happiness of Ethiopians. Uh, and, and therefore, my main focus uh, at this stage is to achieve that. With regards to relations with uh, our neighbors, we have excellent relations with all of our neighbors, with the exception of Eritrea. Uh, we have excellent relations with Sudan. Uh, we actually happen to be one of a very few governments in the world who can talk uh, in confidence <coughs> with both the government in the north and the uh, SPLM in the south. Uh, we have excellent relations with uh, uh, Djibouti. We have excellent relations with Kenya. We have excellent relations with the Somali government. We have very bad relations with a group called uh, Al-Shabaab. Um, but it's understandable that we would have very bad relations with Al-Shabaab uh, because it's a terrorist group al linked with Al-Qaeda. Uh, and the only country backing Al-Shabaab in the region is Eritrea. As you know, we Africans have declared Africa a nuclear-free zone. And we would like to make sure that there are more nuclear-free zones uh, especially close to uh, our neighborhood. The problem in Africa was the African state. That the African state was doubling 
uh, in economic issues that were, should not be of it, its concern. And that is the reason why Africa was not making progress. So the solution uh, to that problem was to keep the African state small, weak, and out of economic interference. And so the creation of so-called night watchman state in Africa, in an environment where Joe would have it, massive economic, massive market failures, whether it's infrastructure or education or health, meant that all the necessary investments that are required to uh, uh, kick the uh, process of development and industrialization forward were not forthcoming. I'll give you one example. Uh, in infrastructure, power, roads, telecommunication, and so on, the idea was that the private sector would invest in infrastructure in Africa. It didn't for 30 years. It's only now that the Chinese are investing. So the period of massive investments in infrastructure in Africa were periods where foreigners wanted Africa's commodities. First period being in the 19th century, where Europeans needed Africa's commodities, and they got it through colonialism. They, they carried out massive investment in infrastructure. Second period is the beginning of the 21st century, where countries such as India and, and China also needed these commodities, could not resort to colonialism, did not want perhaps to resort to colonialism. Uh, and so they invested in infrastructure in a very different manner. So uh, it's only at the beginning of the 21st century with the emergence of new powers that we have investment in infrastructure. And without that, there cannot be economic growth. So the bottom line is the idea of neoliberalism that we oppose is that it, do, it, it uh, does not allow the state to play a positive and active role in addressing market failures that impede development in Africa. For some people who may not know this, Ethiopia is the source of Arabica coffee. Uh, and so we can rightly claim the intellectual property right uh, of Arabica coffee. Uh, together with some of our uh, friends in the United States, uh, we, uh, we wanted to do that. Uh, we uh, wanted to um, register some of our coffee varieties. We have, over 200, we have over 200 coffee varieties in Ethiopia. And we wanted to uh, uh, patent, as it were, uh, two or three of them as a, as a starting point. Um, we made some progress in the United States first. Uh, but some of the major uh, coffee uh, companies would not, uh, were not happy with it. Uh, and so uh, with the support of uh, uh, friends here, particularly uh, Oxfam US, uh, we, we tried our very best. Uh, in the end, I think we have succeeded in registering three of our coffee varieties here and in Europe. We have ways to go in terms of registering our coffee variety in Japan, but we'll do it. Uh, and obviously, I did not have any right to abandon that intellectual property. I didn't create it. Past Ethiopians created it over thousands of years. Uh, and it does not belong to me. It belongs to all Ethiopians of the future. So I had no right to negotiate on this, on this right. I, I would have been happy to negotiate had it been my property or my right, but it was not. My party did not get 99.6% of the vote. It got 99.6% of the seat. You do not have to have the total uh, uh, vote in a seat to win that seat. If you get 50% plus one in every of the seats, you get 100% of the seats. We did get an overwhelming majority of the vote. And I suspect after seven years of double-digit growth, seven years of roughly 11.6% growth, 
after seven years of very equitable growth, Ethiopia's uh, Gini coefficient is 0 0.29. It is the lowest in the continent and one of the lowest in the world, which means our growth has been very broadly equitable. Given these two facts alone, I would be very surprised if we didn't get overwhelming support from the population. I do not know if you know this, uh, but uh, VOA is not allowed to broadcast to the United States by law. Um, it is allowed to broadcast to other countries, but not to the United States. Uh, because it is supposed to reflect the um, policy of government in power of the day. Um, now, um, VOA Amharic service um, happened to be uh, dominated by people who are associated with the previous regime. And uh, those who are associated with the previous regime tend to have a particularly Johannist view of events in Ethiopia for understandable reasons. Uh, and we took uh, a page from uh, the uh, policy of the United States and said uh, VOA is not welcome to broadcast to Ethiopia either. I um, suppose uh, you are aware that in a parliamentary system, the party that wins the majority of the seats uh, gets the power every time. Uh, there are term limits in the United States, but none in the United Kingdom. I would hope you would understand that the United Kingdom is perhaps just as democratic as the United States and that the parliamentary system is just as democratic as the presidential system. The presidential system requires term limits. Pres uh, primar uh, prime ministerial systems or parliamentary systems do not require presidential systems. But in case you are wondering whether I have plans to stay in power uh, until, um, until kingdom come, I can assure you that this will be my last term in power. Uh, Ethiopia is a poor country. It's been mired in conflict for decades. It is um, in a very rough neighborhood. Somalia is just to the east of us, and Sudan is to the west of us. We are in between these two major fires. So that's a very tough neighborhood. But I want to tell you all that we are making progress, that we are getting out of the cycle of poverty and violence, and that this is open for everybody to see. So I would like to invite you all to come and visit Addis. Thank you very much.